estimated cost of depression in the United States due to lost productivity yes. and health care. Eighty trillion dollars. Let me say that again. Is the estimated annual cost of depression in the United States due to lost productivity and health care? Now it's a it's a it's a um, an issue for the workforce. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 50% of Americans with major depression do not seek treatment for it. Mm. <laughs> and I have to say this, all I have to say about all of this is like, wow, wow. It's staggering. It's staggering. You know, I'm a fan of uh, transformative learning nature. Just tell everybody what a transformative life coach does and is. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, first, just let me say thank you for sharing those numbers because I think it's important to just ground mm -hmm. how um, pervasive it is as a problem. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of transformation, it's a lot like it sounds, you know, over the years people say transformational counselor life coach. Um, it essentially means that different from traditional therapy or traditional approaches, mm -hmm. we start with present moment mm -hmm. um, and the goal is to have the client um, become very clear about where am I mm. what is most in need of change in my life what needs to be transformed and transcended mm. and against that backdrop we too will uh, do some uh, review of the history mm -hmm. um, to see what kinds of things thoughts behaviors have uh, created um, the dis-ease and yes. discomfort that so many of mm -hmm. us find ourselves in. Um, and we work on uh, really one idea that I've loved for years, which is, are you willing to allow there you go. where you're headed to have more impact than where you've been? Because mm. if, uh, you know, if you're willing to allow that, then we can transform anything. Yes. And, and you're, you're, you can give testament to that as well. Yes, so using that, what you said, okay. put in, in frame for me and for all of us about these numbers that I, that I just presented. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, I'm, you define what depression is. Mm -hmm. and, and part of my work is continually trying to make it in a way that's relatable mm -hmm. because you know people of color it's been so long stigmatized we were mm -hmm. taught you know take it to Jesus yeah uh, nowhere else don't air your dirty laundry yeah. um, and so what that what that does is we tend to think of depression as something that happens to other people uh. but when you just define it impacts how we feel Mm -hmm. um, it can cause us from not being able to get on with our day-to-day. -day. Mm -hmm. And when you think of it in terms of that kind of normalcy, mm -hmm. then I think people are more willing okay. to consider, oh, is that me? Yeah. Or maybe that is me. I haven't felt like getting out of bed with the same vitality mm -hmm. in the last three months, six months, one year. Mm -hmm. um, and that that's not actually um, a, a place that I should be okay operating from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it can be just that simple. Like, something about that is off. Yes. I would like to have a vitality that I once knew. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean I'm cray cray. Okay. <laughs> but it does mean that, you know, something in my biochemistry, something situational, loss, grief, anything could have had an impact um, that makes it okay. That That's makes right. it so perfectly okay for me to seek help. That's right. A professional, um, you know, to be able to go beyond our girlfriends. And right. it's not to say that mm. sisterhood does not play a role because it does but I, I just think it can't be understated the importance of having someone who is not biased that's right um, who's clear who has perhaps more imagination mm -hmm. and capacity for perspective to listen and offer you some insight that can help ground and change your situation. And she, absolutely. <laughs> and you know what? I'm, I'm thankful for the good girlfriends. Yes. Um, I found myself in a moment like that. Uh -huh. And it was, fortunately for me, it was short-lived because of a girlfriend. Really? 
And it was when I was director of publicity at Arista Records okay. and Biggie had just died. Oh. And now I was with Biggie every day leading up to his death. And I decided that, um, I took a look at my calendar after that Soul Train Awards and decided, you know what? I'm not hanging out in LA for two more days. Really, why am I hanging out here more until Tuesday? And it was Friday night. And mm -hmm. it was because so I could go to two more parties, and one of them included mm -hmm. the Vibe Party. And I said, well, I am not staying out here to go to two more parties. That's out. So I tipped off. I didn't say anything to anybody. I didn't send any, send any emails. I just told Biggie I was leaving, and he tried to encourage me to stay to go to the party with him. And then when I told him I wasn't, I gave him. he asked me for my tickets, and I gave them to him. Wow. So when I got the call to turn on CNN, Biggie was dead, I went mm -hmm. to a cold shake and into a massive tunnel. And so that was like Sunday morning and then I didn't get out of bed on Sunday. I did not get out of bed on Monday and did not go to work. And then I was like, Tuesday, I gotta get up, I gotta face this. And so I had a girlfriend who called me and said, LaJoyce. And then I just, you know, just, you know, cause black women, we leap tall buildings in a single bound. We Absolutely. put the S on our chest, we keep it moving. We suck it down, no matter how hard it hurts. And she said, uh-uh, sweetheart, you are traumatized. Yep. And I said, no jerk, Sherlock. Like, really? <laughs> you know, I was only in the stupid <laughs> truck, okay? So, yeah, she's like, you call human resources and you get a counselor. And I was like, no, 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 me and Jesus gonna handle this. Exactly. And I'm gonna deal with this on my knees. And she said, I'm gonna give you 15 minutes. She, <laughs> let me shout out Terry Rossi right now. Absolutely. She Please called do. me every 15 minutes for one hour until she said, I'm going to walk over to that office building, go to the human resource di director, whom I know, she said, oh, and wow. I'm going to tell her what you're dealing with. And, and if you don't do it in 10 minutes, I'm doing it. And I was wow. like, okay. You know, she was wow. like my big sister in the business. Sure. She checked me. Yes. And in one hour, that counselor was sitting in my office. Awful counselor, by the way. But um, uh, nonetheless, <laughs> nonetheless, it helped me. It helped me get that snap back. You know what I'm saying? And I walked out of a dark, dark tunnel. Yes. Well, Correct. See, that's the, that's first, the first place. Step. There you go. And uh, what's her name? Terry. Terry. Thank you, Terry. Terry because Rossi. see, we're so mm -hmm. used to being dismissive. And that's yeah. step one. That's to it. To just even acknowledge something traumatizing has happened. Mm -hmm. And if it, you know, if it moves me from grooving the way that I normally walk, mm -hmm. that's actually natural. Mm -hmm. That's what's normal. Mm -hmm. To have done anything otherwise is what would have been abnormal. Now, in your work, why do you think so many people are afraid to say they are sad? You know, I've written a, a long piece at Essence called uh, The Fear of Being Debbie Downer. Come on. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, nobody wants to be the sad person. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we treat pain like it is something contagious. Oh. So if you have gone through something like Biggie's homicide, uh, a divorce, job loss, whatever it is mm -hmm. that would naturally create sadness, mm -hmm. um, people, whether they're conscious of this or not, will, you know, leap over any and everything to avoid you because mm. there's this, there's this internal anxiety. Mm. Because they don't know what to say. They don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. And let's just think about what compassion means, you yes. know, to witness and hold space for mm -hmm. someone, mm -hmm. to empathize. But what that means is I have to be willing to jump into your shoes as best as I can mm -hmm. and and really listen to what you're saying and be willing to feel. And who wants to do that? Well, how many people in our in our society today really do ask people mm -hmm. and mean it how they feel? How they feel. Now I have to tell you something.